Hey Sugar Snaps, welcome into the studio. If you're new here, I am doing a pine needle basketry series and this is actually finishing out the series. So welcome in, be sure to check the description below for all of the videos that have come in this series. I went over how to uh, collect and process pine needles, how to dye them, how to clean them, and how to weave a coiled pine needle basket. Today we're going to finish off the baskets that we created and I have several different finishes to show you so we'll dive in and I'll show you how to use them and how they turn out. I have four pine needle basket finishes for you to try on your baskets and I'll go over how to apply them. The first is shellac and then the last three involve beeswax. So one will be just plain beeswax, the second is beeswax and paraffin, and then the third is a beeswax wrap recipe that I have used from Mountain Rose Herbs and used to create beeswax wraps which are an alternative to plastic wrap for food storage. This is cotton cloth that I have spread the wax mixture over and can use for food storage. If you want to see how to make these, you can check out this video up here. First up, let's go over how to use shellac. The shellac that I like to use comes in a spray can, so I can spray it. I always spray outside, so set up outside so that you have good airflow. Take out a piece of cardboard, you can lay your basket on top and then spray it down. The reason I like the spray can is it's less mess. If you're using a shellac that comes in a can, then you're also going to need a paintbrush. This guy is gigantuan, but something similar to the, this, a disposable paintbrush is handy. And if you do that, you will need ammonia to be able to clean the brush once you're done. Unless you just wanna throw it away, which you can do, but sometimes reusing is nice. To use a spray shellac, what I do is lay out a piece of cardboard and then place my basket on top. And then using the spray can, I, I make sure to shake the can so that the mixture is well mixed and then hold it six to 10 inches away from the basket and spray in short bursts so that it completely covers. And I do both sides at the same time. I'll do the inside and then the outside of the basket or vice versa, and then allow it to dry. And you'll want to check the time on your can to make sure that you're doing it or allowing it to dry for the amount of time that it suggests. And I'm going to allow it to dry for 15 minutes and then apply a second coat just to ensure that it's completely sealed. Once that second coat is finished, you'll finish off with a vigorous rubbing of a lint-free cloth. This polishes off the surface of the pine needles, make sure any excess drips from the finish or shellac have been wiped away, and it removes all of the pokey ends of the pine needles. As you are weaving, there's some that might stick out, and this will break those off and make the surface of your basket smoother. The pros to using a shellac finish is that it's super de easy to use, especially if you're using the spray can. You just need cardboard, the spray can, and a mask. Wear a mask when you're applying this because it is a poly-based, chemical-based product, and so you don't want to be breathing it but it's super easy to apply. You apply it, wait 15 minutes, apply a second coat, and then let that sit for an hour or so, and it's good to go. The cons to using shellac is that it is a chemical-based product, and so you're applying chemicals to your natural pine needles. So if that's a problem, I suggest moving on to the beeswax techniques I'll show here in a few minutes. Another thing is that if you don't want a sheen or a shine to your basket, don't use shellac because it does apply kind of a shiny surface. It seals it off really nicely, but also adds that shininess to the pine needles, which really isn't super noticeable until you set it into a lit area where the light is reflecting off of it. It also adds a bit of crunch to your basket because it kind of stiffens the needles up a bit and so your basket doesn't have the gentle nice malleability or moldability that the pine needles do before you finish it. Now let's talk about applying beeswax. You can use beeswax as a finish for your pine needle baskets as well. This I have in beeswax pellets, so it makes it easy to melt these down and use as a liquid. So I like to set up a double boiler and heat these up, make them uh, runny, and then apply this to, with a paintbrush to my 
pine needle baskets. Again, you'll want something disposable or something that you're going to designate for beeswax. Beeswax can be somewhat messy because the wax stays on whatever you apply it to. So if you're using a paintbrush, I designate that paintbrush specifically for beeswax application, whether that is my pine needle baskets or beeswax wraps, I can have that designated and set aside for that. That way I don't have to clean out the brush. If you aren't going to be repeating this process, you may consider using a foam disposable brush or something that would be easier to toss once you're done because it's really difficult to successfully get out beeswax from the uh, hairs on a paintbrush. The way I apply my beeswax is to set up a double boiler and I have a jar designated to beeswax so I don't have to clean it out. It makes it easier and I also have a designated paintbrush for the beeswax. So I melt the wax slowly by having water in my pot and my jar of beeswax in that pot of water and heating it on medium until the water starts to simmer and the wax begins to melt. You don't want the water to come to a boil because this will start to splash into your wax and cause problems. And then you apply the beeswax to the basket using your paintbrush. And this will probably start to look terrible. So just know that the first application, it's gonna get chunky and beeswax dries really quickly or hardens really quickly. So just keep at it, apply it to the surface because we finish it off in the oven on a low heat to allow the wax to melt into the basket. And it does a similar process to what beeswax does to a beeswax wrap where you have it on the surface of the material, you heat it and the wax just embeds itself into the pine needles and into the surface of the basket and melds in with the basket so that it doesn't sit on the outside it's it's actually absorbed into the entirety of the basket which makes a really great waterproofing um, scenario. Then once that has melted in in your oven, you'll set it on some parchment paper. And I like to have the parchment paper in my pan when I put it in the oven also because it just keeps things nice and neat. And then I'll set it on that parchment paper on the counter to allow it to cool and harden and stiffen up as the wax cools down. Then finish that off with a vigorous rubbing of a lint-free cloth like we did for the shellac basket. And this will again in, polish it and remove any excess wax and break off the pokey needle ends. The pros to using a beeswax finish on your basket is that it's a natural material, especially if you get organic beeswax pellets. So it just seems fitting to apply beeswax to pine needles. It also adds to the scent. Pine needles have a wonderful piney scent and you are just adding to that by adding the natural beeswax smell to the surface of your basket. It's very pleasant to work with. Beeswax is also nice because it keeps or maintains the natural texture of the pine needles. Even though the beeswax is absorbing into the pine needles and into the surface, it isn't shiny and so it doesn't add the uh, kind of synthetic shine that a shellac would. The cons to beeswax is that it can be expensive and sometimes hard to access, especially if you're trying to find something that's ethically produced. So that can be a drawback. It also is messy. You'll need something designated for beeswax or something that you can dispose of after you've melted the beeswax. And you'll need that brush, the jar, all of that kind of situation. And it takes some extra setup because you'll need the double boiler. Also hot wax can cause severe burns. So if you're not really careful, then uh, it can splash and cause burns. Keep it away from children and pets and try to keep your area clean as you are clear <laughs> as you're working with it in order to avoid any accidents happening. Okay, now I want to talk about a few different recipes for using beeswax and additional items to finish your baskets. An additional way to use beeswax is to add paraffin wax to the beeswax. Paraffin is a polymer-based wax that you can mix with beeswax. It makes the beeswax more fluid when you melt it and can be easier to apply to the surface of your basket. It also is more economical because it's slightly cheaper wax than beeswax. So you can mix the two and have enough to cover your basket. So it's a great option if you want to use the wax finish and achieve the same results as the beeswax, just have it be slightly cheaper and maybe easier to apply. So you'd go through the same process of 
melting the wax in a double boiler and then applying it with a paintbrush, heating it in the oven to evenly distribute the wax and then rubbing it down with a cloth at the end to rub in all the excess wax, remove excess wax and also um, break off those poking needle bits. So same process as the beeswax, you're just doing a 50-50 split between paraffin wax and beeswax. The pros to using a paraffin beeswax combo is that it's slightly cheaper than beeswax. You're still getting the benefits of using a wax so it doesn't add the shine. It is still mostly a natural material. You're still getting the nice scent from the beeswax and finishing off your basket all in one. The cons to using paraffin and beeswax is that paraffin is a petroleum-based wax, so if that's something that concerns you, steering away from using it on your basket is a good idea. And again, using a wax-type finish is messy. It takes caution because hot wax can burn, and you'll have to do a little bit more cleanup than you would a shellac. And now I want to share a beeswax wrap based recipe that I like to use on my pine needle baskets because it adds a little bit more luxury to the basket, to the smell, and to the overall finish. And that is a beeswax, jojoba oil, and pine resin mix. And I'll have the recipe in the description below and I'll share it on the screen here as well. You're going to use 0.3 of an ounce of pine resin, 1.2 ounces of beeswax pellets, and one tablespoon of jojoba oil. And it's the same process with the beeswax. You combine those measurements in a double boiler, allow all the wax to melt. Pine resin melts really slowly, so you'll need to allow it to sit in the double boiler until the pine resin finally decides to melt and mix in. Mix that all up, and then you'll apply it the same way as you did the beeswax with a designated paintbrush apply it on, it will be messy, you'll heat it in your oven, all that jazz. Finish it off with a lint-free cloth to get off all those pokey bits and make sure all of the excess wax gets incorporated or is removed from the surface so you don't have globs of wax on your beautiful basket. And then you're good to go. The pros to this finish, are you still maintaining the natural materials? All these ingredients are from natural materials. You're maintaining the wonderful scent of the pine needles in addition to some pine resin and beeswax scent. So just kind of adding back in some pine resin that maybe you washed out when we processed the pine needles. And again, the cons are that working with wax is messy and finding all of these materials are kind of specialized materials so they can be a little bit challenging to source. I do have resources in the description below as well as a corresponding blog post covering all of these different things so you can find places to purchase all of these materials to finish your own baskets. I think my favorite finish for pine needle baskets for ease is the shellac because if I'm trying to go quickly and finish my basket, I can quickly lay out cardboard, spray it down and go from there. But if I want the slow process and having the natural material as natural as possible, I really do prefer using just plain beeswax or beeswax with hobo oil and pine resin because it finishes it off nicely. I end up with something that's high quality. I've taken the time and gone slow to add to the value of what I've created and it ends up being a beautiful piece with the natural matte finish of the pine needles in the wax finish. We've covered a lot of different finishes here and slightly different recipes, so be sure to check out the description below for more information and for the blog post that corresponds with this video going over all of the details. You can get the recipes for the different mixes there. Thanks so much for joining me for the Pine Needle Basketry series. This has been really fun. I've really enjoyed diving in and focusing in on, on one thing the last month or so and creating some fun Pine Needle Baskets. Thanks for joining me. Be sure to see the blog post that has all of the different videos that I've done and all the resources and other information on pine needle basketry and more resources if you just want to deep dive and you know 
follow the rabbit trail uh, on pine needle basketry and i'd love for you to do that so check that out in the description below or in the pinned comment and on my website textileindy.com my next series is going to be focused on tapestry weaving so don't miss out on the videos coming up in the next few weeks i'll again be sharing a series and we'll go through the process of setting up a loom how to weave on that loom and all kinds of goodies so check that out next week and until then happy weaving keep on making and i'll see you in my next video bye